Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning from South Australia. How are you all doing? Good morning this fine, fine morning. It's lovely and sunny here in South Australia. It's chilly, but it's sunny. So that that's, makes me happy. So please say hi. Uh, let us know that you can see us. You can hear me okay. As always, I'm just going to quickly make sure that this is set to public. Uh, so that everybody is able to see it and join. Hello, hello. Hey, Rebecca, good to see you. Oh, so good to see all you guys. All right, so that one is fine. And let me just, one of these days I am going to have elevator music for you all. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of you all watching me. Um, okay, I think we're good. Yep, I think we're great. Okay. Hello. Hey, Las Vegas, New Zealand, Western Australia. Oh, Jody, we are thinking of you guys in Perth. Our hearts are with you all going through another lockdown. My goodness. Uh, good morning. Bahrain. Wow. Bundaberg, Oklahoma, Arkansas. Wow. Wow. You guys are amazing. It's, isn't, I know I say this all the time, but isn't it amazing the way that we can live in this day where you just can be in your home and hit go live on Facebook and you can connect with people all over the world. I just think it's it's such a precious gift. Hey, guys. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we are very excited uh, for this morning and uh, to be back with you. I think that this is probably our third one in a row, maybe already. Um, but yes, we're very excited. So Matt, hello, good morning. Thanks for jumping <laughs> on again. <laughs> it's great to be here, Lana. It's a beautiful day here in Sydney as well. We're supposed to get to a top of 22 Celsius for those who don't understand the difference. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's a beautiful day here in Sydney. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, it's been freezing here in Adelaide. When I got up this morning, yes, it was before the sun got up, but it was, I think, four degrees Celsius in my house. Um, so yeah, it was quite chilly. And I know that's nothing for like some of you in the US that are like, yeah, we go minus Lana. <laughs> but yes. <laughs> uh, so it's always a good day when the sun's shining, hey? Well, we are um, excited about this morning. Um, I'll just give you guys um, a very quick uh, rundown and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about Matt for those of you that may be joining for the first time and then we're going to dive in. Um, so as you would have seen from this, uh, from the flyer little promo thing that we put up on Facebook, we titled this um, Panting and Longing for the Commands of the Lord. Uh, that is really because during the week last week, I was absolutely undone by the Lord as I came across this particular scripture that we're going to dive into this morning. Um, and so I'm just, I'm saying this before we even you know, start talking about this. The reason I am saying, um, giving you a little bit of a heads up is because I believe that in this live that the Lord is going to really minister to your heart, but release a, I saw a supernatural hunger that's going to be increased in your hearts for the, the longing for the voice of God, the longing for his command. So even before we start talking about it, I want to encourage you to position your hearts this morning uh, for the Holy Spirit to move and for him to do what he does best, and that is to love on you, to speak, to minister. Um, I really believe it's going to be a powerful time together. So for those of you that may have been joining for the first time, uh, this is Matt Beckenham, who is a dear friend to Kevin and I, him and his wife, Trish. They are in Sydney. And Matt uh, leads Haberfield Baptist Church and does a incredible um, amount of prophetic mentoring and is just somebody that really carries the heart of the Father who releases the love of God, the voice of God in such exquisite ways. And every live, I say this, and I will continue to say it, I walk away so blessed uh, just sitting here and, and seeing what the Holy Spirit uh, does through Matt. And I know many of you watching um, are very, very familiar with Matt and very thankful for his ministry. So I know it's going to be very, very powerful time this morning. And Matt loves coffee. So that, that's Absolutely. a good thing too for our friendship. <laughs> Uh, yes, I have mine here too with my little kookaburras on there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, so, Matt, anything else you want to say before we dive in about yourself? Oh, look at that, Courtney. Hello. There's the little email address yeah. down there. Yeah. Did I so miss cool. anything? 
Uh, I think I think you summed it up pretty well. Uh, for everyone who thinks that being a Baptist and, and a prophet uh, is a challenge, stay tuned. That's uh, that's all I've got to say to that. Um, yeah, I'm just God is just doing things in all different kinds of denominations right now and across the world. Yeah. So part of my my the privilege I have is leading a global uh, community through Haverfield. And so many of these uh, people are online. Like yesterday, we had Rebecca leading worship from Minneapolis wow. uh, straight live into our church. And um, again, just it's brilliant to watch the kingdom work. And so it doesn't matter where you are. Mm. Uh, we're followers of Christ. And it's just my joy to be a father to so many in the house. And I have a real passion to see spiritual mums and dads being brought back into the kingdom in ways of grace and just ways of such love so yeah so that's that's kind of my heart yes that's so good um i'm just going to double check somebody's saying there's an echo um do you guys want to just let us know can everybody hear us clearly i do have earphones in um so just give me a like i was going to say give me a wave <laughs> but yeah just let me know if you can hear us clearly um, I, will, I think we're a little bit lagged on comments. Um, on my end, it's clear. Matt, is it? Oh, yeah, here we go. I don't have an echo. Awesome. If okay. you do actually have an echo, um, it can help to actually put earphones in your ears. Sometimes we find uh, streaming with YouTube, sometimes we can get a little bit of an echo. So if you do have an echo, just grab some headphones and that should, uh, that should rectify it. Hallelujah. Yes, coffee is the key to the kingdom, Rebecca. Amen. <laughs> That's a word. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> All righty. Well, we are going to dive in this morning. As I, I said before, you know, the Lord uh, really ministered to me deeply. Um, as I sat with him this week, and Psalm 119 is one of my favorite passages um, in, in the Bible. I just, I love it. I love it. I, I just read through it and I just lap it all up. Um, but I particularly came across this scripture uh, the other day and I want to read it to you. Um, I'm going to read it to you first out of the New Living Translation. Um, hang on, sorry. Let me just, my phone's a bit laggy this morning. Um, let me just get it up. Here we go. So in the New Living Translation, in Psalm 119, 131, it says this, I pant with expectation, longing for your commands. Now, when I read this, like I, you know, I long for the commands of God. I long for the voice of God. I long for his heart. I long to know his ways. But when I read this, it was like the Holy Spirit ignited this longing in my heart in a way that I just haven't experienced before. Like since then, I just, I cannot get this out of my spirit. And um, and so as I was looking at this scripture, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do what I always do. And I'm going to go and look at the word pant, like, and I'm going to look at um, the dictionary definition of what does it look like to pant. Now, Immediately, I don't know about you, but when I think of panting, I think of a dog, right? A dog's panting, right? When they've, they're they thirsty or they've, you know, run around like crazy. I used to have a Jack Russell Terrier who, like, would run like mad and just constantly pant because of the level of energy that, you know, he would run at. Um, and so I thought, well, I'm going to have a look. And I looked at the, I think this one's called the freedictionary.com, and it said to pant is to breathe rapidly in short gasps, to be Beat loudly or heavily to give off loud puffs. And I'm like, okay, yep, keep going. And then it got said this, to long demonstratively and to deeply yearn. And that in itself, I believe, is such a beautiful picture of, of, of longing, a deep yearning for the commands of the Lord, for the voice of God, to encounter him, to know his ways. And as I was sitting with the Lord, the Lord spoke to me that, you know, Matt, you and I have touched on this probably in different language over the last couple of lives, but, you know, the weariness that many have been feeling over the last little while, you know, the trials, the battles that so many have been in. And one of the common comments has been, I'm so exhausted, I'm so tired, of, I'm, I'm so weary right now. And as I sat in this passage, 
the Lord said to me, Lana, he said, I'm, I'm going to bring my people from a place of knowing the panting of weariness into a fresh um, impartation and awakening of, of panting for my presence and panting for my word and panting to rediscover my voice. And so as we start this broadcast, as we dive into this conversation, I want to encourage you that if you're, you find yourself on here today and you're like, yep, so weary, feeling so dry, feeling like I'm panting because I feel like I'm in a desert, I want to encourage you that the eyes of the Lord are upon you. I want to encourage you that, that there is an encounter with the Lord where he wants to minister to you afresh and bring you into a deeper place of not panting out of exhaustion or panting out of weariness, but panting out of longing and, and expectation for his commands. So with saying all of that, Matt, I want to hand to you. Let's just do what we always do and see what God does. But what's been, what's bubbling in your heart around this beautiful topic? Yeah, Psalm 119, like I know it's the longest one in the, the, in the Psalms. It's probably the longest chapter in the Bible as well. And so often when we we dip into that, but we don't read it. Like so, we just find those little little nuggets. And and again, in the midst of this, this one verse of the writer who is saying, "This is my heart's desire." Yeah. Now, you think about that too. Like the word "yearn," that was the word I had on my heart this morning too, Lana, when I was seeing and thinking about this, and the yearning that I have to be to be present and to listen. Now, when I read Psalm 119, it starts off praise, like it's just like, yep, God's great, excellent. Mm -hmm. And it's two stanzas in and all of a sudden it's like the writer goes, okay, I'm in the deep end and I want to talk to you about how challenging my life is. And what he's, he's singing this song of this to God and he's just saying, I am not going so great right now. Yeah. And he's putting words around this and he's and he's struggling, it seems at times, to find a new way of saying, I want to hear God's word. So as many verses I think that there are in Psalm 119, there's as many different ways as the psalmist is saying, just want to hear your voice. Mm -hmm. that, that to me is the essence behind so much of what's happening right now in Christianity. I think for so many of the people watching, they're tired of religion being the voice. Yeah. We want the unique individual voice for each one of us. That's our design. That's how we've been created. I think God spoke differently to Adam as he spoke to Eve. As you go through the Bible, you see each person who comes along, he has a unique conversation. And there's times he says the same things, but he's speaking it into different ways situations and so often when we go to church and we'll hear a message and we'll listen for how it speaks into our situation uh, and again that's the way we're designed to operate we're listening for his voice to us and so the writer here in Psalm 119 I don't know how many times he says teach me I love yeah. that concept yeah. like I want to be a forever student of the kingdom of God to learn and to know because I think as soon as you stop asking questions you stop learning and as soon as you stop learning, you stop you stop discovering new things. I'm like, Lana, how cool is it when God gives you a revelation you've not had before yeah. and you sit there and go, this makes sense. Yeah. I can see how this actually puts into my life. I, yeah. I can see how I can apply this. And it's, it's that moment of, of revelation where it comes application that you start growing. And so if we stop asking questions, we stop learning. If we stop learning, we stop discovering. And if we stop discovering, we stop growing. And for me, this psalm is one of a guy just going, right, I know you're good. I get that you're good. I have been a part of your voice. I know your voice. But there have been this a season in my life or seasons in my life where I feel like I've gone missing in action from you. And again, I love it how he speaks to the Father through this psalm. He calls to him for rescue. He calls to him for encounter. He calls to him for his love to be manifest. Is this not the prayers of the prophets of today? We want to see God manifest in the world that we live in, in the lives and the hearts that surround us. And for me, Psalm 119 is like this extraordinary uh, love story of a relationship. And you think about it, Lana, like as long as we've known each other from the first meeting to where we are, you grow mm -hmm. 
we grow. I look at some of these people on that are commenting. I love them. I hear them. I know them. I see them. And it's growing into it. What do I want to do with each one? I want to grow some more. Yeah. I want to learn some more. I want to hear your voice as it's spoken into my voice because I believe, Lana, inside of your voice is the Father's voice for me. So when I sit and listen, if I read one of your words or if I listen to some of your teachings, it's like, Father, just speak to me. And, you know, Lana, half the people here who are in my community, they will often be sending me Lana's words. Have you seen what Lana says? Have you heard what Lana says? And it's just like it's this beautiful cross flow of the kingdom of the growth of that place. And what are they doing? That concept of yearning to hear his voice. And when they discover it, they've gone, Matt, can you believe this is what God has said to me? And I wonder if I can share it with you. I love this cross flow of the kingdom. I think it's our design. I think that's how we've been created to operate, Lana. Yeah, so good. And, you know, I was even thinking this week, you know, we can um, in life, you know, sometimes we can we can get distracted and we can get weary, like we've said, or we can let other voices become um the voice that we're listening to, right? But right now, like even as you you were sharing that, I was I, I've been feeling this really strong uh, invitation from the Lord where He's wanting to, and you used these words last night when we were texting back and forward. You said to rediscover His voice. And I think that there is such a weight on those words because I think that there may be one of you, there may be 50 of you, there may be 100 of you that are watching right now and and you feel like, wow, like, you know, I need to rediscover the voice of the Lord in my life. Like whether it's been the voice of religion, whether it's the voice of the enemy, whether it's, you know, the voice of fear, whatever it may be. I feel like even today, like that the Lord is is really inviting you deeper into this place of rediscovering his voice and rediscovering the power of his voice. You know that I say this all the time, you know, one word out of his mouth changes everything. Like you said, Matt, you know, that moment where you get that revelation, you go, oh, my gosh, like I get it. And it changes everything. But it may not change your circumstance, like your physical circumstance, yeah, but it changes you and it changes your perspective and it changes, you know, your heart. It transforms you. And so then you walk into your circumstances differently. You look at your circumstances differently. And I just, I feel the heart of the Father this morning really strongly to breathe hope uh, to people again this morning, like to really release his, his voice in a place that, that brings life that the Lord is, is is good and he's speaking good things and that there is this place where God is wanting to um, touch you afresh to bring you into that place of yearning for his voice in a deeper way than you have. And I love in the Passion Translation, I think it's the Passion, let me see, I've got like five Bibles open on my desk. <laughs> um, it says um, in uh, Psalm 119 verse 31, it says, Lord, don't allow me to make a mess of my life for I cling to your commands and I follow them as closely as I can. Verse 32, I will run after you with delight in my heart for you will make me obedient to your instructions. Verse 33, give me revelation about the meaning of your ways. Oh, when I read this, like I actually... It takes everything within me not to just fall on my face and start crying. Like this is, if I could sum up one of my greatest desires, it is this, like it's very much this. Lord, give me revelation about the meaning of your ways. Why? So I can enjoy the reward of following them fully. Give me an understanding heart so that, so that I can passionately know and obey your truths. Guide me into the paths that please you, for I take delight in all that you say. Cause my heart to bow before your words of wisdom and not the wealth of this world. Help me to turn my eyes away from illusions so that I pursue only that which is true and drench my soul with life as I walk in your paths. My goodness me, I could just say, Sailor, see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> like the just the depth of the heart of God and, and the heart of the psalmist that I feel here 
it, it's just it's such a place of encounter and Matt I think you know when you were saying that you always want to be a student you know I I love that because one of the keys that the Lord gave me when I was writing my my book I hear the Lord say new era I was hearing all of this revelation for the new era so God saying I'm doing a new thing and these are some of the things I'm going to do Lana and my heart is yes I want to hear what you're doing but Lord I also want to understand how to partner with what you're doing right I want to know how to how to embrace it and walk into alignment with it and one thing the Lord spoke to me was this Lana go back to school with the Holy Spirit go back to school with the Holy Spirit and there was this invitation to come back to school with the Lord and be like the psalmist that says give me revelation about the meaning of your ways and so that I can enjoy the reward of following them fully. Like in that place where we say, God, I want to know your ways. I want to understand your ways. Like what life is found in his ways. We're not pursuing illusions like the psalmist said here, you know, like help me to turn my eyes away from illusions, but actually to look at you and to long for your commands. Give me revelation and may my heart bow not before the wealth of the world, but may my heart bow before your words of wisdom. And so I think when we talk about things like this, about longing for the ways of God and the commands of God, like what we put value on, we like it, what we long for, like we put value upon. And so the more that I, I, I see the value of his ways and I see the value of his wisdom and I see the weight, I see the precious treasure that his words are to me, the more I find myself not in a place of striving but in a place where I throw myself on my face and I say, God, I'm yearning. And see, the yearning doesn't come from a religious striving that goes, I have to yearn. No, no, no. The more I see him, the more I see Jesus and the more I recognize who he is and the weight of his words and his revelation and truth and the fact that I, every time my feet touch the ground every day, I'm invited to hear what the King of Kings is saying. As I live in that place, then I, I I can't help but yearn. So yeah, I just I love this. Yeah, I love it too. And there's so much, even just what you've just shared, that we could probably put a full stop in that and just go, yep, that's just <laughs> utterly beautiful uh, mm -hmm. and precious. I loved how you said to in the passion to cling to His commands. The word cling in Hebrew is very much associated with our word obey, and I love how uh, Brian Simmons uses the word cling because mm -hmm. again. You think about the words, like if I think about the words that Trish speaks into me of love, I cling to those words. Mm. I don't obey them. I cling to them. Yeah. That they're life to me. When she speaks yeah. of care, when she speaks of love and concern and, and she speaks to my identity, these are words I cling to. And it's, again, I don't need to obey those words because I'm holding those words. And I know it's a nuance in the word, but I love how Brian Simmons does that. And I think for us too, it's like cling to the words the Father has spoken to you. Mm -hmm. Think about this. What other words that the Father has spoken to you? What words brought you to the kingdom of God? Mm -hmm. For so many of us, it's what I just discovered that he loved me. Yeah. Like when someone loves you, that's not a word to obey. That's a word to cling to. And I love that word, Lana. I just love how that, that word has been interchanged with that because it's a relational word. It's mm -hmm. the words that we hold on to because I think Eve actually let go of God's words in the garden. Yeah. She didn't cling to them as if they were very life. And you see throughout Scripture, there are times where, where like some of the most famous people of Scripture walk away from the commands of God. Mm. They let go of them. Yeah. You know, think about the children of Israel at the promised land. God said, it's yours. Just take it. It's Yeah, you've got to fight for it, but it's yours. Just take it. They let go of the words mm. and in doing so, let go of the promise. It became for another generation. Mm. And then there's beautiful times where people cling to those words and hold to those words. And you watch that, like even in Song of Solomon, when Solomon's speaking over the Shulamite woman, right? These aren't words of command. These are words of relationship. And this is the thing for me, to go back to school for the Holy Spirit. It's like, Lana, you're saying, it's when I put my feet on the ground. Yeah. And I feel the ground beneath my feet. The Spirit of God wants to speak something to me in that very moment. 
See, sometimes for me, because I've been raised in uh, like a conservative environment, sometimes I've actually got to separate myself from what is religious to understand what it, what is grace. And when I understand what is grace, I can then look to see what I need to let go of in the concept of being religious so that I can hold on to what the, and cling to the very words that the Father is speaking over me. And so when he tells me and speaks into my spirit of my identity, uh, re the religious spirit will say, really, is that it? I'm not really sure that's what it is. Let, let's push you into another little box because I don't think that's what you're actually called into. Like, I don't know about you, Lana, but it was a long time before I felt comfortable even with the word prophet. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's been a long time to feel comfortable with the word pioneer. Why? Because I, it's like that talking snake in the room that comes in and we start clinging to his words for some reason that tells us we're not good enough or we're not strong enough or we don't have enough faith or God hasn't done enough or you haven't done enough or you're not clean enough. All of those phrases, these aren't the words that we cling to. These are the words that we just chuck in the lake of fire because they are not meant to be our words. You know, I love it when you say that God speaks, he creates, right? You know, God didn't write creation down. <laughs> he spoke creation into being. In the ancients, the, the concept of the spoken word was powerful and it should be still to us today. The problem is that we don't put enough weight on our words and so we think that they're just something that can be retracted, they can be something that can just disappear. No, I didn't really say that. And well, All of this disappointing conversation flows into the concept of the power that the Father has given to us. And the whole phrase, I love you, is so powerful. That one phrase is so powerful. It cuts through hurt and pain. It cuts through unforgiveness. It cuts through rejection. It is so powerful. But if we think that it's not, then it feels like our words just fall on the ground in front of us. You know what? Satan wants us to believe for that. And so if you're praying away something demonic, he's, he's just going, you actually believe for that? I'm not really sure you're believing for that. I don't think you're believing for that. And we're not going to do anything about that because I can't hear any faith in what you're doing. Now, I'm just sort of paraphrasing a very extraordinary conversation that Satan might be having. But inside of that, he's looking to see whether we value the very words that the Father has given to us of our identity, of our purpose, of our authority, of the commissioning that the Father has led us into. And so here in this psalm, you've got this guy going, that's the place I want. And the Father, I, I, want, to, I want to put away every other voice because all I want is your words. All I want is what you're speaking to me. All I want is the words to cling to. And I love this psalm because he's like, yeah, I messed up and I have walked away. I have disobeyed your words. I have sinned. It's so honest. And this is the beautiful conversation I think the Father wants with all of us. Lana, he doesn't want to hear your, your greatest hits to, so that you're impressing him. He wants to see the, the faith that you carry so that you can amaze him like we said last week. I just think this whole concept of clinging to the words, going back to the place of learning of what the Holy Spirit is doing. It's like with Samuel's day, is it not? Remember when Samuel got woken up by God? And it's like the Bible said that God didn't speak very much in those days. Yeah. And I wonder whether that actually means they didn't listen very much in those days. We come to the, to the cross of Christ and the Holy of Holies is blasted open and all of a sudden the voice of God and the Spirit of God is poured out on all people. And this is the thing. Uh, it acts too when the Holy Spirit gets poured out on all people. It means that the entire globe, Christian, not Christian, whatever you want to call it, has been affected with the Spirit of God in some way, shape or form. I don't know if everyone agrees with that sort of concept, but straight there in the Bible, and I'm very happy that Luke wrote that inside of that in in coming to the concept that the Holy Spirit has been poured out on all. Mm. So now we can hear God through all things, on all things. It's the yearning of our hearts that he's meeting us. It's Jesus saying to the Samaritan woman, I've got the very thing that can quench whatever it is you're thirsting for right now. And you don't hear the disciples saying, Jesus, we need this to quench thirst. We hear the disciples saying, only you have the words of life. Where else would we go? Mm. So powerful. Anyway, oh, preaching a bit. So back to you. Oh, <laughs> Matt, I love it. No, I could, um, like, I could sit here and just listen to you all day. Like I just, yeah, and I, I love that you you jumped on that word cling. Like because I think even I was having a conversation with somebody this week, and we were talking about. Um, 
you know, just what God is doing right now. And we were also talking about some of the the battles that uh, people are facing in the church. And one of the uh, topics or themes we had um, really seen in our own lives and in lives of others was that the the enemy was trying to change the narrative, meaning the enemy's coming with his like, you know, his voice and his lies and his accusations and all of these things to try and cause um, God's people to align with his lies and to align with what he's saying and then to create with your words. And so for me, I was even saying to this friend of mine this week, I said, you know, I was in a particular situation and I can't remember exactly what I said, but I said something out loud like, you know, oh, like, gosh, like it's it's always going to be like this or something along those lines. And the Holy Spirit picked me up straight away and he said to me, is that true? And I, and I didn't even realize, I didn't even realize what had come out of my mouth. And in five minutes, the Lord began to show me that over that week that the enemy had been whispering in my ear and saying to me, oh, things aren't going to change. It's not going to change. And I didn't even, like I knew it was there, but it was like I, I didn't even really recognize it. It was just, it was so bizarre. And when the Lord spoke that and he said, is that true? Immediately I went, oh my gosh, I've heard that voice all week. And I didn't jump on it. I'm like, Lord, I'm sorry. And in that moment I went, no, I am going to align myself with what God is saying. I'm going to align myself with what he's saying. And I'm going to create with my words because I'm not creating out of my own strength. I'm creating because of his words that create when he speaks. So I'm echoing that which he is speaking. And so it really brought me again, even in my own life personally, to remind me again, no, 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 I have to be so intentional to cling to the words of life and to cling to the words that God is speaking. And, you know, so many, um, you know, friends of mine like Catherine Renala, uh, if you want to jump on her page, you can have a look. She's been having dreams um, with God showing pretty much the same thing in different ways that, hey, you really have to be intentional right now to take your thoughts captive and to speak what God is speaking and to speak his truth and to wage war. And she's just... She's She's released some really beautiful encouragements. Um, but I just, I love that concept because I want to ask you today, wherever you're watching, you know, wherever you are, whatever situation you find yourself in, you know, what are you clinging to? Because it, it's easy to cling to some days you have a bad day and you're like, oh, you know, and you're, you're, you're hanging on to these other words. But the Lord is reminding us again, no, 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 I cling to the words that are life. And I feel like there's a fresh... Um, invitation to us in this new era to childlike faith. It doesn't mean it's not immaturity. It's that place that says, you know what? I know where the words of life come from. You know, I, I know where, where life and truth is. And I'm going to cling to those words with childlike faith. Like I can tell my kids anything you know, and they believe me because of my nature, because they know who I am. They know that I'm not going to intentionally lie to them. You know, they know that I'm, I'm, I love them. And so I'll tell them something. And especially my two-year-old, he looks at me, you know, in, in wonder and goes, oh yeah, like mommy said it, of course. Like mom said, I can jump off the lounge and she'll catch me. I'm going to trust that she's going to catch me, right? She's not going to let me fall on the ground. And I, I just, I really felt, Matt, while you were talking, just that the Lord was releasing this this fresh breath of hope and encouragement to people, you know, for that place of childlike faith, for that place of holding on to, to his word. And I kept thinking of the scripture as you were talking, Matt, where the disciples are walking on the road and, and they say to each other, you know, didn't our hearts burn within us? right as as he as he taught us revelation, as he spoke these words of truth. Like I feel like that there is a a beautiful place of encounter for so many of you right now where the Lord is releasing revelation. He's releasing his, his commands, revelation of his ways, his truth that will bring your heart from a place where it's been panting, where you may be like the psalmist and gone, whoa, I've made a mess, right? I have, you know, like I have absolutely made a mess, but I'm coming back and I'm clinging to your words again, wherever you may be. I feel like there's a fresh fire of his presence falling upon your hearts to ignite your heart afresh, you know, to burn for and long for his commands in such a greater way. And I want to share this and then I'll hand to you, Matt, if you have anything else. But 
you mentioned something when you started talking about and I can't remember exactly what you said you said something about when the Lord the words the Lord first gave to you um, but it reminded me of something I haven't released this word publicly yet but about three weeks ago, the Lord said to me, Lana, I'm bringing my people back to first words. And I said, Lord, I, I don't understand. And uh, and he began to unpack this word for me. And it's a, it's a multi-layered word. But part of uh, what he was saying was, you know, I'm bringing my people uh, back to foundational truths of Scripture, right? That, that foundational place where, you know, the Bible says, you know, that whatever it may be, whatever the promise may be, that the love of God is unconditional or he's the God. God of Ephesians 3.20, whatever it may be, that he's bringing his people back to the foundational place of first words, you know, the, the first things that God has spoken, the, the pure word of the Lord that hasn't been, um, you know, I, I just I felt like there are a lot of people that have been in such a battle that things have become hazy, things have become, you know, like there's been like a, um, almost like a fog and the Lord was saying, no, I'm bringing you back to and reminding you again, this is who you are. This is what I've created you to do. You know, this is what my word says. And it was a fresh kind of encounter with the Lord to remind you of his words. This is who you are. But he also said first words. And this is what I, I just want to jump on quickly because, Matt, when you said that, um, it reminded me of this, the first words that some of you watching, you may have um, had a word that God gave you, might have been at the start of this year, might have been at the start of last year, it may be a word for the era, but it is a word that God gave you at first and all of a sudden you've walked a path and now you're at this end and you're looking back going, I don't even know whether that word was actually right. Like, because where I'm at right now is so opposite to what I thought I heard. And I heard the Lord say, I'm going to bring you full circle back to the first word again. And so if that's you this morning, I want to encourage you that even as you meditate on this scripture and you say, God, give me revelation of your ways. Give me um, greater understanding of what you're doing and, you know, what, what you're doing in my life and how to partner with you. All of those beautiful things that are in this psalm that the Lord is going to remind you again of the words that he first spoke. The word that he first spoke to you before the enemy came and challenged it before somebody else came and said you couldn't do it, before your own fears started coming up and going, oh, no, no, maybe maybe don't do that. But the Lord's going to remind you afresh, no, 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 this is what I've said. This was the first word I gave you. Go back to the first word and do what you did at first. And I, I really believe that there's going to be some really beautiful encounter and healing and deliverance mm -hmm. that God's going to bring as you do that. Yeah. I think that's beautiful, Lana. Like, as you're saying that, I'm thinking of Abraham. And I wonder in the 20 years from you're going to have a child <clears throat> to Isaac being seen, how many times did he have to be reminded of that word? Yeah. Like, if we actually put ourselves in the conversation of 20 years, yeah. you know, it's if you, anyone's been waiting for a promise for that long, it, yeah. uh, you connect very strongly with the concept of Abraham until finally that child is conceived and finally he's holding Isaac in his arms. But Abraham, before he was Abraham, was Abram, and that means um, exalted father. Everyone knew him as an exalted father who had no kids. Yeah. Like yeah. where did he get his name from if not from God? Like, And then God says, I'm changing your name to be father of nations. And he's like, cool, there is a problem. <laughs> Maybe you haven't seen it, God, but I haven't got any kids. And he says, all of my stuff is going to go to my servants. And, and they try then to circumnavigate or circumvent the, the promise by bringing uh, Hagar into the conversation. And God's like, I'll oh, bless that, bless her, and I'll bless Ishmael. But that's not the promise. And again, I love it. I love it. That's Benji, right? I love yeah. it because this is the child. This is the divine interruption. This is the moment for everyone listening. You've yeah. just heard Benji's voice prophesy life into this feed. This is the beauty of children interrupting moments of time. Life has been spoken into Lana's home. Life has been spoken now to the world. 
Think about that and receive that. And so if you're feeling barren in the concept of the promises, the words of God, then this is the moment to receive from Benji the words of life that he has just sung out, spoken out, yelled out, screamed out. I don't know which one of that was. His mum would know which version of of that noise that would be. But this is the point. When the Father speaks, he wants to speak life into you. He doesn't want to speak. He doesn't speak death nor condemnation. He wants to speak life into you. And from the two-year-old child, the youngest prophet in the house that we have in this moment, speaking and releasing life back into us, there's the Abraham promise. You know what the promise of Abraham was? That he would be a blessing to all nations. Right now in the Vorza home, The whole concept of Benji releasing his voice is a blessing to all people who are listening to this around the world. And if you can get the concept that God can prophesy through a two-year-old child, you will start looking for God in so many other areas of your life and allowing his words now to to be clung to. So who, who listening now can cling to the very word that Benji has just released? Yeah. Now, it, it, it may sound silly to some, but it definitely does not sound silly to me because it's again, that's the word that I want to receive. That a two year old can speak life into my ears so that I can receive that, to know that, to walk out of my room after I finish this, to know that my life has gotten a little bit bigger because a two year old's voice was heard. This is the Abraham promise that the God that God has given to every one of us to live in this place of his blessing. What does that look like? Family. It looks like community. I saw Rebecca drop a note up there. She said that deliverance happens inside of community 100%. If you are feeling alone, if you are feeling isolated, you listen to the voices that the Father has placed in and around you and you watch how deliverance just happens. And if you're feeling isolated at all, or alone, sit with Lana in her room right now and receive the voice of Benji over your life and allow the Father to prophesy a fresh word, an unexpected word. Last week, Lana, you prophesied surprises. Yeah. Could, could that be the surprise that we're releasing today? Like, I don't know, Lana, but this that moment is so precious to me, so beautiful, and it's just uh, that's an encounter right there. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, you know, Matt, I love many, many, many things about you. But one thing that I love um, is that you look for him everywhere, you know, like where you may go, you know, I may sit with somebody and I'm, you know, doing a live and Benji starts crying and they may go, oh, like, you know, tell your child to be quiet, you know. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, I, I sit here and you stop and you go, no, 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 hang on a sec. God's in that. You know, like just the prophetic kind of, you couldn't make that up. You're talking about, you know, life and 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 children and the promise and my little two-year-old decides to stand at the door and make his voice known <laughs> quite loudly. But I, I just, I love that because if we like boiled all of this down, right, and we go, okay, so to cling to the word of God, to cling to his promises, to cling to first words, like all of those things, I I have to be one that's looking for him everywhere. Like if I am longing for the ways of God and I'm yearning for his voice, then I'm going to be looking for him when I'm sitting in the word and I'm having my coffee with Jesus. When I'm talking to you, Matt, I'm looking for the Lord and what he's doing. When I'm sitting with Kev, you know, we're having a cup of tea, I am listening for the voice of the Lord. Like while I'm out in nature, I'm listening for God. I'm looking for him everywhere. And when, and I just, I really feel like, you know, there's such freedom in that place. Like as you were speaking, Matt, I just, I kept hearing the sound of like this religious, like I can't even describe it was like religious chains were like breaking and there was this freedom that was bubbling forth and a joy of like hang on a second hang on a second yearning for him I'm I'm gonna look for him in my day not just when I sit in the word not just when I'm in worship not just when I'm at church if I am able to go to church right now you know I'm gonna look for him in every area of my life and I know Matt this is a passion of your heart it's a passion of my heart just to to really recognize his voice and to recognize when he's speaking and especially in the moments where there is a divine interruption like that and go no no no, hang on a sec wait a second God what are you saying right now what are you doing right now and I just I thought that that it was just absolutely beautiful (laughs) um but I want to read this very quickly 
uh, uh, we were talking about promises and in, um, let me check which Bible, the Passion Translation. <laughs> <laughs> I love the words so much. If you could all see my desk from behind me, it's covered in numerous translations. <laughs> um, but in verse 38, the psalmist says, reassure me of your promises for I am your beloved, your servant who bows before you. And I, I just want to encourage you today that um, not only is the Lord bringing you, you know, into this fresh place of a, a deeper touch by his spirit, um, a fresh fire falling upon your heart to yearn for his promises, to yearn for his voice, to rediscover his voice afresh, but also that the Lord's heart, I feel so strongly that he wants to reassure you of his promises. He wants to reassure you that, you know, he, he's, the promises of God in, in Christ are yes and amen. You know, the, the Lord is, is bringing a fresh um, remembrance to you again. You know, and I want to encourage those of you that may be saying, yeah, like, you know, I do feel like there's been this incredible kind of battle over the promise and there has been, you know, I'm a little bit confused now and whatever it may be, go back to the Lord and say, God, reassure me of your promises. Lord, what were the, what were the things you spoke to me again? Lord, speak them again to me afresh and then I'm going to cling to what you're saying. And God, I, I surrender my heart afresh to cling to your ways in this new era. If it looks different, okay, like I'm clinging to the what your ways. God, give me a fresh revelation of your ways. And I, if I could give you a Facebook Live homework, it would be this. Sit in this passage. Like even if you just sit in verse 31, you know, Lord, allow me, uh, don't allow me to make a mess of my life for I cling to your commands and follow them closely I will run after you with delight in my heart for you will make me obedient to your instructions. The NLT says I will pant with longing expectation. Just, just sit in that this week and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you afresh because uh, some of you are going to have some, some deep weariness is going to break off you and there's going to be that fresh fire of his spirit that's going to burn and a fresh hunger that will be ignited in your heart as you encounter him afresh. So, Matt, do you have anything else that you want to um, tag on before we, we wrap up? <laughs> you don't have to. I just don't want to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I, I just find myself listening to what you've got to say and just going, wow, my brain is firing in about 500 ways. And you say, have you got something else? I've got a thousand things in my yeah. mind, but some of those are for myself and I yeah. guess, but it's, yeah. it's beautiful to hear and listen to the way that um, you interact with the Spirit of God like that, Lana. It's just such an honour. Thanks, Matt. Well, would you do everyone an honour and, and please um, pray, like just lead everybody in in prayer because I know we, yeah. we've seen so many testimonies from yeah. just the way that you deeply minister to people. Uh, let me kick it off with this. And the picture behind me is uh, one that a friend of mine drew. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a lion. This morning when I was preparing for today, like my community, I told them that I'm um, ministering with you today, Lana, and, and Courtney sent me a message and she says, um, I've got a picture of a lion. Now, I've never used this lion behind me, so I, I went and pulled it off my living room wall and I stuck it behind me. Um, as she spoke a word, so I release a word. That's what I believe. Uh, and so if you can see, if you could see the actual detail in that, it's a it's a pencil drawn um, drawing of a lion, a friend of mine who drew, but it's so beautiful, but it's all about detail. So much detail. So what I might do is lead an activation that I've not done before. It's just sort of dropped into my spirit as we go. And it comes out of the, I think it's the book of Isaiah. I can't remember the exact phrase, but it talks about when the lion and the lamb lay down with each other. Mm. Is that an Isaiah thing? If I got that wrong, if I should I have hit the New Testament on that one in Revelation? I can't remember which it is. Somebody in the chats will be quick on the gun and give me a... a a verse for that but it's this whole concept of the lion and the lamb so when i pray if you're new to this concept i love to use your imagination in prayer and again if that's again a new thing to you if i asked lana to pray she would often start with words and then break into some place of vision what's that she's using her imagination to find words and then she's using imagination the gift she's got to actually see for vision 
Mm. It's the same deal. I think we've all been created to use our imagination in this particular way. And so the way I do it is I usually close my eyes to do it just so it blanks out every other distraction that's got going on. But if you feel like as we're doing this, you want to look at that line, uh, you feel free. There it is, Isaiah. Thank you. Glad I got that one right. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be horribly wrong if it wasn't even in the Bible. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, I had some. I had someone quote uh, me Lord of the Rings a while ago, thinking it was the Bible. And I said, no, 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 that's Gandalf. <laughs> oh, no. Sounds good, but that's Gandalf. Um, anyway, there's no reason why encounters can't be fun. That's true. <laughs> so the whole verse of the lion and the lamb laying down beside each other. So if you want to close your eyes, feel free. If you just want to put your eyes on that um, lion, you do so. And so I want you to use your imagination to picture a lion and a lamb laying down beside each other or with each other. If you're able to do that, I want you to think about the ground that they're on. Is it grass? Is it a forest? Is it dirt? Is it sand? Is it a beach? Imagine, and again, there's nothing wrong in this imagination. You're just allowing your imagination to picture a lion and a lamb laying down beside each other. Feel the wind if there's wind, the warmth if there's sun. Even if there's a smell, allow all of your senses to be engaged with your imagination. Jesus is over all things and through all things and in all things. If this scares you using your imagination, just ask Jesus to surround you right now. Allow his peace that surpasses all understanding to be your portion. It's like the disciples. They could speak peace into a home and it would become a tangible reality. Again, what you speak, words create. So speak peace over your heart, over your mind, over your home. So picture the lion and the lamb. And I want to invite you to walk into this vision and rest. Find your place of rest. I see for many of you, you're resting into the mighty lion. It's not something that you would naturally do if you're in Africa or wherever you are with lions. But there's something about this lion that is strong. There's something about this lion that is protective. You know that this lion could get fierce if it needs to. But there's something about this lion that you find rest in. Then look for the lamb. Allow the lamb to interact with you. Now, you know scripture. Jesus is both called a lion and a lamb. Ask yourself the question in this imagination. What does the lion mean to you? What does the lamb mean to you? And when you put those two sentences together, you have what Jesus means to you. Let the yearning of your heart today be satisfied with the presence of the Saviour. Feel the breath of the lion or the lamb. Nothing else matters in this moment. The presence of God is here. So Jesus, today, would you reach out and heal? Would you reach out and deliver? Will you allow your grace now to be seen in ways that's not been seen? May there be treasures that are now revealed in this one imagination for people that they've not ever seen this kind of love or known this love before, that there's something of this love that will draw them deeper, as Lana would say, deeper into you, deeper into your presence. The ancients longed to be in the presence of God and it was manifest in clouds and fires, but these days it's manifest in presence and love and we've got it because the Holy Spirit has been poured out upon us. So today, as you rest with the lion and the lamb, take all the time you need 
to stay there in that imagination. We pray that in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. 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 Thanks, Matt. Wow. Beautiful. His presence is tangible. That's mm. beautiful. Oh, well, thank you so much again. What a joy, as always, to uh, flow back and forward with you and just see what he does, right? <laughs> <laughs> And he always does powerful stuff, isn't that the coolest thing? It's just so good. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, well, Matt, I'm going to pop up on here your details. Um, they're all right. So for those of you that um, want to follow along with Matt and um, you aren't already, details are on the screen. Matt, do you want to take two seconds and just explain a little bit about the prophetic mentoring? Yeah. So I, I run a course called Prophetic Mentoring. It's five weeks. It's one uh, one meeting per week. And you're in a very small group with me and one other co-leader. Um, and there's a couple of those. Courtney is one of those co-leaders. Summer mm -hmm. who's here with as well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you'll see them in the chat. Um, we take you through five weeks of a small group of five or six people. So it's very uh, intentional. And, uh, and we help you discover and learn how to hear God's voice, test God's voice, trust God's voice so that you can love his voice. It's that whole concept of when Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. So we should be able to recognize that when our father is speaking. And so I take you through concepts of hearing God speak through the Bible, dreams, visions, creation, and using your imagination in those safe ways. Um, we love to place a community around you in that time so you're supported through that. Uh, but we've found that this has been just a really cool way of just activating if that's the right word but just okay. helping people discover the father heart and to know that they can hear god it's, it's mm. so precious yeah it's awesome well i encourage you guys to really um do that and uh follow along with matt and uh and jump in on the prophetic mentoring because yeah it's amazing so many testimonies have come to me of people that have jumped in uh, on matt's training so i'd encourage you guys to do that um, Matt, just very quickly, um, can you see in the chat, Pamela, I just saw your comment. Um, so I just, before we log off, can you see that comment, Matt? You might have to scroll back up. Uh, yep. Please pray for me. Pamela, taking your own life. Okay. Would you, um, can we, pray? yeah. Yep. Do you want me to pray for yeah. Pamela? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I was going to say, I, I really feel like we should pray for her. Pamela, one of the things that I believe that God has placed upon you to be in this moment with Lana and I right now is to know that Christ is safe yeah. and that there is always hope. Yeah. This is where, for me, like I want to be community for you right now, just to be able to speak life into you, Pamela, yeah. and just to know that you are not only seen but you are loved. Yeah. You are loved so powerfully and so deeply that we just want to take a moment just to speak over you um, that, yep, even through the mess, the father is weaving together a perfect picture that has you, your husband, and your children in that perfect moment. So yes. encouraging you, Pamela, to reach out. Um, wow. Again, if anyone is on this feed that knows Pamela, yeah. just encouraging you just to step into that place and just lift her arms up when you're tired. Pamela, that's, that's kind of how Alana and I work at times too. When one of us is tired, the other one's ready to lift up. And, again, we want to be able to, the ones to lift up. So let me just pray uh, for Pamela. Yeah. And so, Father, I just want to say thank you uh, for Pamela, each of her children, her husband, her home. Yeah. And, Jesus, would you just knock on that door of that house right now and allow your spirit to, to flow, to flow yeah. over her. May she know that she is safe today in your arms. Jesus, would you step in and, Lord, just Drag Satan out of that house. Do not let him stay. Do not let him put a foothold in there and throw him out of that house. And as you throw him out of that house, Jesus, would you have your mighty angel stand guard around that home and protect it? Put a guard around it, Lord, to defend. I pray, Father, for a whole host of angels to sing and to worship and to drive uh, any fear or, or depression out of that home. And that tonight or wherever, wherever Pamela is, that the peace of Jesus will rest upon her heart, her mind her children, and Jesus, for the day that she's in and for the hope, Lord, that's been stolen, would you go and draw that hope back into a spirit, breathe it back into a spirit. We thank you, Lord, for this moment for Pamela in Jesus' name. Yeah, Amen. Thank you, Lord.
Amen. Yeah, Lord, I pray for Pamela right now. God, I thank you. Lord, I just see you, Jesus, standing in front of her. Lord, and I thank you. I, I just see you placing your hand upon her heart. Lord, and I thank you, Lord God, that there is life that you are releasing into her heart. Lord, I thank you. I, Pamela, I just see that as Jesus is touching your heart right now, I saw your heart go from what looked like it was quite um it was quite tired and quite chained. But when Jesus placed his hand upon your heart, I saw it begin to open up like a flower and it began to almost like pulsate as it was blossoming. Every petal was opening up and Jesus was looking into your eyes and he was speaking words of life to you. And I could hear him saying things like, you are not your past. You are not what people have spoken. This is who you are. And the destiny that I have for you is great. Pamela, I really believe that the enemy is coming against you right now strongly uh, to try and steal what like what you're saying Matt like steal hope and to steal life and to contain you and to to basically steal kill and destroy because you are so loved by the Lord you are you have so much worth you have so much value that Jesus laid down his life his blood was shed because he loves you so unconditionally and you have a great destiny over your life there are great and mighty plans that the Lord has for you and the role that you are playing in raising your children as being a wife and it and the Lord is really I really believe drawing you into this beautiful place where he's going to unlock your heart and you'll be able to breathe afresh again I just see this fresh wind that the Lord is going to bring you're not going to wake up every day feeling mm -hmm. heavy and wake up with this almost this um, this weighty uh, oppression over your life that the Lord is breaking it and the Lord is bringing you into a time of such deep intimacy with him where he will touch your heart afresh and that your heart will blossom with life your heart will blossom with a, a fresh um a fresh wind like a second breath so lord i thank you right now in the name of jesus lord i thank you for pamela i thank you for who she is lord god i thank you that she is your child father i thank you that you have created her and that she is fearfully and wonderfully made so lord right now in the name of jesus lord i break any assignment of the enemy against her life, Lord, to steal, kill and destroy. And Jesus, I thank you that you are standing in front of her, Lord God, and I thank you that you are going to reintroduce her to your voice, Lord, that she is going to hear your voice during the day, at night, as she sleeps, that the voice of the enemy will no longer torment her, but that the voice of the Lord will bring life and life abundantly into your heart, into your mind and your soul, Pamela. So Lord, I pray that you would take her into that deep place of encounter lord that you would take her into that deep place where you will just pour your love lord into every fiber of her being lord that her heart would burn with love lord your love may she feel so at peace and so safe in your presence lord we thank you for pamela in jesus name Amen. Amen. And Pamela, like Matt said, you know, please, you know, stay in community, reach out, keep talking to people. Um, yeah, but we love you. We're standing with you. We're championing you. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Matt. I just saw Trish reach out to her as well. So, oh, um, praise God. Awesome. That's great. Awesome. Thanks for uh, joining with us, everybody. And look at all of you amazing people, yep. how you're loving on Pamela and praying for her. My goodness, when I, I just see moments like this, it just it moves my heart to see, yep. you know, the community, the body of Christ, you know, like maybe one or two of you know Pamela, you know, but I'm sure a lot of you don't. And look at you. As soon as someone's in need, you're there and you're praying and you're decreeing and speaking life. Oh, my goodness, it's just amazing watching the body of Christ come together and lift up somebody's arms when they need it. So, all right. Well, we love you guys. Thank you again, Matt. Always, always, always a joy. What oh, a my joy. Pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much, Lana, for trusting. Uh, it's, it's one of my favourite things to do. I've already told you that, but, you know. <laughs> Oh, well, guys, have a great evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. And, um, yeah, it's just been great to be with you. And we look forward to seeing you sometime again soon. Okay, bless you heaps. Bye. Bye.